Hey guys, um, it's just me again, and I'm going to work this um, next problem on your review. This is the one where I need you to calculate the mean, median, mode, range, variance, and standard deviation, as well as create a box plot. Um, for checking the data for outliers and identifying the shape um, and calculating the Pearson's coefficient, I want you guys to do that portion um, by hand, but I want you to do the first um, section using either Minitab or Megastat. I'm going to show you how to do it on Megastat. So I'm going to come up here to go away, Jing. Go up here to Add Ins. I'm going to Megastat. Remember, all of this is going to be found under Descriptive Statistics. So I'm going to get that dialog box that I love so much. And so I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to say, all right, I need the mean. And then the question becomes, are you going to treat this data as a sample or as a population? Because remember, there's a difference, isn't there? I think if you read the problem, you'll see that it's just a sample of waiting time. So I want the sample variance and standard deviation. I need the mode. I need the range. And I need a box plot. So that's everything that I need except for telling Megastat where my data is. So remember, I'm going to click into the input range until I see that little line blinking. I'm going to come over here to my data. I'm going to scroll down. Remember, I want to see those numbers getting bigger there on the right. I'm going to let go of my mouse, and I'm going to double check that I've got everything I need. Mean, median, mode, range, variance, standard deviation, and I'm going to click OK. And then my computer is going to think for a second, and it's going to give me what I need. So what it's going to show me is, remember I said I needed the mean. I wanted the mean, the variance, standard deviation, wanted the range, wanted the mode. And now what you'll see is on my box plot, it has identified, or at least in Megastat, it has identified my outliers. I know that I've got some low and some high outliers, because remember I'm showing outliers out here in the box plot as these little dots. I also remember, and I'm going to use that median line in my box plot to help me determine shape in terms of skewness. So let's see what we've got. All right, so we've gotten you this far, um, except remember that there are two other things that I need, aren't there, um, in order to complete this. <clears throat> and that's that we're going to check the data for outliers. Granted, your Megastat output tells you, identifies these low and high outliers, except I need you to identify, I've asked you to identify the inner and the outer fences, so that's going to be a calculation you've got to do by hand. Um, I want to know something about the shape of the distribution when presented on a histogram, and that's really where that using that Pearson's coefficient of skewness is. So in order to complete this problem, I'm going to have to see you um, calculate those inner and outer fences as well as calculating a Pearson's coefficient of skewness. And if it was me, I'd probably create a histogram of this data and include it. Again, like I had you do on the previous problem, you're going to need to take um, your worksheet and you're going to need to make sure to have these descriptive statistics that answer the question, as well as this box plot. They're going to need to go onto an Excel or a mini tab worksheet with your name on it. They're going to need to be printed, turned in with your exam, with all the rest of your correct answers. And you know that if you have trouble printing during the exam, you're just going to raise your hand um, and I'm going to come over and help you. My recommendation is wait until you have completely finished the exam and then we'll worry about getting that stuff 
printed for you um, right before you turn it in. So hope this helps. Have a great day.